Welcome to our tutorial about controls in the VBA environment. We already know some ways of manipulating controls. We can grab, drag, and drop into our form. Also, if I click on the controls, I'm able to drag a region onto the form. Release the mouse. If I double click on a control, I can insert a few controls in a row. Let's control select some of our controls and delete them. Simply click the delete key on your keyboard. Each control has specific properties. Two of the same control will have the same types of properties. We can assign values to each of these properties. For example, the first field we've got here is name. Now it's a good habit to assign a name that you'll remember a few months from now when you open this program again. It's also a good practice to use different prefixes for different types of controls. I'm going to pull up a list of some commonly used prefixes. For example, ListBox uses the prefix LST and Button uses the prefix BTN. This will become even more important if you need to collaborate with other programmers and engineers on a project, or if you're using code written by someone else. However, even if you're writing some small script for yourself only, using the common prefixes and names will definitely save you time and prevent future confusion. Your name should look something like this. Label My Text. I use the common prefix LBL. Now let's take a look at the caption property. This is the text which appears on your label. Another property is border color. Even though I've selected black as the color for my window frame, I don't see it here. The reason is that we need to change the border style to change this property. Now let's set our font properties. I'm going to leave the font type the same but set the style to bold. When I click OK, I see my changes in the form. We can also set the height, width, and position of the controls. For example, let's enter the height as 20, tab and the left position at 140, tap. This is a measurement in pixels. As you see, our control moves in the form. I can also grab the control and drag it to my desired position. I can resize it using the handles. And the height and left position numerical values were modified accordingly based on my mouse movements. If I want to view these properties together, let's go to the Categorize tab. Now we see our positions right here, height, Left, top, and width. Left, let's enter zero, and zero for the top also. Tab. As you see, the position is measured in pixels from the top left corner. Now let's set up some properties for the button control. Click a second time on the button to change the caption right on the button itself. Next, let's enter a name for this button. I'm going to call it BTN Yes. By the way, Yes has populated the caption property field as you can see. Next, let's take a look at the control tip text. This is the text that appears when you mouse over the button. If I want to change the properties for more than one control, I select the controls and now only the common properties are visible. For example, font. Let's use a 10-point bold for demonstration purposes. OK. We can look at the names in this drop-down menu. You see that two controls, the Yes button and the label My Text, have more descriptive names. One other thing. Let's talk about the visible property. I can set the visible property for my label as false. This keeps the label visible during design time. 
However, during runtime, I won't see the label. Let's try this out. As you can see, in runtime, I don't see my label. Let's return to design time by closing the running form. And now let's set the visual property to true. And we'll run our program again. Now the label is visible during runtime. By the way, another way to return to design time is to click the stop button near the top of the window next to the run button. And this concludes our tutorial on controls in the VBA environment.